Vinci did not paint the Mona Lisa out of fear or boredom. Now, how is this relevant to an organization? Let me explain. In the last episode, I talked about the fact that every business these days is confronted with an environment best depicted by the acronym VUCA, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Let me explore this one level deeper and talk about what does VUCA mean in terms of tangible impact on an organization. There are four things that probably you are experiencing in an organization as you watch this. First is speed. The need for speed in an organization today is much higher than it has ever been in the history of businesses. Speed is driven by new competitors, new customers, new policies, quicker product life cycles. The second element that is the direct consequence of the VUCA environment is to do with the uniqueness of issues and opportunities that come on the table of a leader. In the same business that you may be running, the issues that you face in a particular part of this business, in a region, in a territory, in a product line, are entirely different than what you would face in most cases in another part. In other words, we cannot templatize solutions for problems across a business or an organization. The third impact of VUCA on an organization is to do with the diversity of the people that are bringing the topics, the opportunities, and the issues on the table to leaders. And here, diversity is nationality, regional, gender, mindset, thinking. In other words, the way you get the issues from the organization is also pretty diverse. The last impact of VUCA is what I would call aspirations. Today, the younger leaders, the younger managers, and the millennials which are entering the workforce have huge aspirations driven by what they have seen, what they have experienced. And hence, they no longer look at you as their leader for solutions. They look at you for support. They look at you for guidance. They want to have the solutions themselves. Now, these four things that I just listed, speed, uniqueness of issues, diversity of people bringing these issues to your table, last but not least, the aspirations of your team are leading to a couple of things that an organization needs to comprehend and act on. Again, all very relevant to the VUCA world. First thing is to do with empowerment. Yeah, I know you all think empowerment is a word I've heard before and it's delegation. No, it's much deeper. It's much deeper. In a VUCA world, the opportunity and the ability to make quick decisions in the front lines is going to be much more intense than it has ever been in the past. And a headquarters for an organization should not, should not be a nerve center or the brain center. It should, at best, be a guiding force, one that focuses on ensuring that there is a glue that holds the organization together, one that focuses on giving values to the organization. That's where it should stop. Empowerment is one clear theme that runs through these four things I listed. The second theme I would like to talk about is to do with creativity. And I don't mean creativity in the context of an artist or an actor or a musician or a painter. Now, those are wonderful and I enjoy them as much as you do. But I'm talking about creativity in an organization. I'll give you a very simple example to underline my point. A salesperson who is going to meet a customer on a sales call is sometimes confronted with a unique condition or something from the left field the customer may throw on the table during the negotiations. Now, I need to be creative as a salesperson to ensure that I'm able to give the proverbial win-win situation with my customer. I'm just giving you one example, and if I take the same example to the production line, one of the most inspiring examples that I've learned in my career is when there was a person who was an operator in a plant confronted with a huge issue with regards to production. And this person, who has no access to a computer at his home, I might add, after work, stayed back, took a common computer at work, and Googled the problem and found a solution. 
is created. Now, in a context, in a world where VUCA and the speed and the uniqueness of issues and the fact that there are diverse people bringing these issues to, to the table, last but not the least, the aspirations of these people to solve these issues, you need to be creative. You need to have creativity run through the DNA of the organization. Hence, I go back to my beginning sentence. I don't think Da Vinci was working on a deadline to complete the Mona Lisa and hence completed it out of fear. And neither do I think he was just sitting there twaddling his thumbs with nothing to do and he just decided to paint a Mona Lisa. Neither was the Sistine Chapel painted because there was a deadline under which fear was operating. In other words, these people were inspired. Creativity comes out of inspiration. Creativity is something that comes because there is a person who feels the need to do that a little bit more, a little bit extra. Isn't it strange that when we expect our organizations to be creative, to be fast, and to do it with empowerment, that we don't think of inspiring them? I find this a paradox. Hence, I again say, in a VUCA world, inspiration is needed for creativity to happen. Without creativity, an organization cannot be successful. And hence, I began with a sentence, Da Vinci did not paint the Mona Lisa out of fear or out of boredom. Thank you. I look forward to hearing your comments and your critique. You can comment on the comment box at the bottom of this page, or you could follow me and tweet me the Twitter handle mentioned here. Thank you.